So Samsung has just unveiled their new mid-range A series and I got a couple of hours of a quick hands-on experience on these three devices which is the Samsung Galaxy A33, the A53 and the A73. So let's see what we can expect on each and how does each of these smartphones differ from each other. Now first looking at the design and the build of the phones, you will find the overall design to look very identical to last year's A series and of course very reminiscent of the S21 FE series as well. Because Samsung's approach on this is why fix something that is not broken, right? Because I still stand on what exactly I said in my review of the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE and also the A72 that I love the overall design, especially the matte plastic finish that these smartphones had. Now in terms of the color options, you'll find these similar awesome colors as last year and some new introductions as well where the A33 that I got my hands on was in awesome black, the A53 was in awesome peach and the A73 is in my personal favorite color of all as usual which is the awesome white. Now I did try to see whether there's any change for the camera bump to see whether or not it wobbles if I type it on the surface and the good news is that it didn't as all of the three variants did not have any wobble at all so that was nice to know. Then looking at the ports and buttons, while all three had the similar placement for the volume rocker and the power button which is on the right, there was only a slight difference on the placement of the SIM ejector slot where it was placed on top for the A33 and the A73 compared to it being placed at the bottom for the A53 together with the usual USB-C port and the speaker grill as well. Now speaking of the SIM ejector pin, another great news is that all three phones has a dedicated micro SD card slot that could support up to an external storage of 1TB. And because all three of this phone has the IP67 dust and water resistant rating which a lot of other smartphones within this segment does not have, I would obviously give this phone an A for the phone's build and of course the overall design because as I mentioned I really love the overall design and the finishes that all of this three smartphone has. Now as for the phone's display, here's where it is more of a prominent differentiating factor for all of the three phones where the A33 has the smallest screen out of the three of 6.4 inches with the Infinity U camera cut in front and the A53 has a slightly bigger screen of a 6.5 inches and the A73 has a 6.7 inch display where the A53 and the A73 had the Infinity O camera punch hole instead. Now while all three phones does spot the Super AMOLED display with an in-display fingerprint sensor and up to 800 nits of brightness, the A33 has a maximum refresh rate up to 90Hz which was nice where the other two has a refresh rate up to 120Hz. And based on my first impressions looking at the screen when it comes to playing videos and just scrolling around the phone, it was obviously great because of the Super AMOLED display especially with the FHD Plus resolution for all of the three phones. So with this, since the display quality has always been the best for any Samsung device, even though that this is a mid-range smartphone, I would give this phone screen an A as well because of its great color accuracy and the consistent quality on all of these three smartphones. Now when it comes to the camera specs, the A33 comes with a 48 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 2 megapixel depth camera and a 5 megapixel macro lens. Then the A53 comes with a 64 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 5 megapixel depth sensor and a 5 megapixel macro lens. And what's very interesting is the fact that the A73 comes with a massive 108 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 5 megapixel depth lens, and a 5 megapixel macro lens. Then the front camera on the A33 is a 13 megapixel lens, whereas the A53 and the A73 comes with a 32 megapixel lens instead. And based on my quick test shots specifically on the A73, the rear cameras were really great 
so was the front camera portrait mode as well. Now what's nice is that all of the three models has the optical image stabilization for the main camera lens and looking for the camera software perspective. It also has features like the single take, the advanced portrait mode like changing the background effect and many other software features like the photo editor, photo remaster and of course the very unique object eraser. And yes, I am planning to test the cameras out further when I get my hands on a review unit. So let me know at the comment section below if you like to see that. And of course, do subscribe to this channel in case you haven't done so. Now when it comes to the video recordings, the phones can record up to 4K UHD up to 30 frames per second for the front and also for the rear camera as well. Which was nice to know because some so-called flagship smartphones out there does not give you 4K video recording for the front camera up until now. <coughs> Show me. Next, looking at the other specs of the phones, the A33 and the A53 comes with the Exynos 1280 chipset and the A73 ships with the Snapdragon 778G chipset. Then the A33 comes with a RAM and storage configuration of 8GB of RAM with 128GB of storage and the A53 and the A73 comes with a bigger 256GB of storage. And speaking of RAM, there's also the RAM Plus or the Virtual RAM option that uses the extra storage from the phone to give you a virtual RAM boost of either 2, 4 or 6 GB of RAM. Then in terms of battery, all phones has 5000 mAh of battery with 25 watts of fast charging where the charger does not come inside of the box so keep that in mind and of course as usual, I'll see how much of a battery life that I can get when using each phone daily. And what's extra sweet is that all three phones comes with One UI version 4.1 on top of Android 12 with three confirmed Android updates and four time security updates. Now going further into other software features, you'll also find that all three smartphones to have the similar flagship software perks like the link to Windows, to have a seamless transition between your phone and your PC. Then there's also the very useful Bixby routines with the amazing if this then that or IFTTT functions, buds auto switching, Samsung Pay and smart things as well. So as of the recording of this video, there haven't been the official price announcement yet here in Malaysia since the global event has just concluded. So stay tuned for that where I'll either update at the pinned comment below on the pricing or I'll let you all know during my full video review of each one of the phones. So guys, with this, do let me know which specific phone out of this three that you would like for me to do first. Tell me in the comment section below.